when, let's just say, I want to kind of paint a picture, but let's just say you're a pastor, you're in a context where you want to start to build this culture where you're discipling your men under you and the pastors under you and um, to, to be authentic, to start to open up and have this yeah. culture of confession and repentance and um, not, not even because there is a, a sin issue known, but just because that's, that's good and right. How do you begin to cultivate that with the, the hmm. pastors on your staff? I think a couple of things are important. One, you have to go first. It's one thing to sh sit down at a table and, you know, to show up and say, all right, everybody, we're going to be open and transparent. Go for it. You know, right? <laughs> we're going to confess our sins to each other. You start. Go ahead. You know? uh, no, like you have to set the tone. You have to actually, uh, and when a leader does that, it gives permission. Um, I mean, I think about this not just with other pastors or other leaders, but with men's discipleship. I remember at the men's discipleship group I led at my church in Vermont, um, I mean, those were guys that they weren't used to sharing. They would have thought sharing in some capacity, uh, you know, especially things that they were thinking about, struggling with, any, showing any kind of weakness, like any of that. So not even significant sin issues, but just things that they were worried about or things that they struggled with or felt deficient in. You just keep all of that buttoned up. And so when the pastor shows up and says, man, I, I really blew it this week by, you know, I, mean, I lost my temper with the girls or something. And, and they're like, whoa, wait, wait, like you can say something like that here? Like he can say something like that here? Now, obviously, if there's patterns of these things, it, it you know, rises to a level of concern that's different. But just the, the climate of confession, you have to set that. Um, and then secondly, giving permission I think even explicitly, implicitly, certainly by your response, but explicitly for people to give you feedback and constructive criticism without being shut down. Show yourself as someone who's willing to hear the truth. Give per people permission to speak the truth to you without, you know, um, being punitive in your response to them um, by not punishing them for you know, for daring to speak to you. When you do that, you, you give a posture of humility and, and openness uh, about reality that then also gives people permission to say, well, he's setting an example and not trying to, you know, be this bastion of, um, you know, perfection. He's, he's humble enough to admit when he's wrong. He's humble enough to accept criticism and feedback. Therefore, that sets the tone the rest of us. I don't have to perform. I can actually receive feedback and, you know, I can be receptive to criticism, maybe even rebuke or correction in certain areas because the man in charge has not been uh, defensive about those things or angry about those things. Mm -hmm.